Welcome back to the Dividend Diplomats YouTube channel, guys. You've got Bert and Lanny, your favorite dividend investors out here on YouTube, guys, helping you achieve financial freedom, helping you build passive income one day and one dollar at a time, baby. Smash that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. We are featuring two great dividend stocks in today's video. We are pumped up. We can't wait to see how these stocks look when we run them through our stock screener and answer a very simple question. Are we buying these two companies? But you're about to go Triple H on them and say, are you ready? I should have. I should have with WrestleMania around the corner, but I was really focused and locked in on this content today. Happy Easter weekend as well as what Bert also is saying. And Bert, and your your Passover's later on, but yeah. Uh, gotcha, yeah. gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, I apologize. Yeah, um, you should. We, no, I'm kidding. Um, we do have two stocks. Two stocks that, guys, they are back. Fine. These, actually, one stock is back on the Dividend Diplomat stock watch list because you guys have been wanting to see it. You guys out there in the YouTube universe have been wanting us to talk about this stock, this stock that yields over 6%. And I decided to put another stock in the ring to speak on WrestleMania here, that also yields almost 6%. Hmm. I want to see if you guys have been buying these stocks. If you think these are stocks to still buy right now, do you think that the worst is behind one of these stocks and the best is yet to come? And we promise you that stock's not Walgreens because we talked about that company yesterday. For each of those two companies, though, we're going to run them through our stock screener, which features those three metrics in the bonus metric, the PE ratio less than the S&P 500, Payout ratio less than 60%. History of increasing dividends is that third metric and that bonus metric. That Oh, so sweet. Cherry on top. Dividend. Man. NWO style right there from Bert with the two. Sweet. Uh, guys, we're going to talk about a stock that's controversial. Stock that you guys are going to have plenty of comments on. We want to hear. We want to comment back. We're not we afraid to step into the yeah. controversy. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. That's right. This is this is the attitude era of the diplomats, guys. No holds barred. We're doing this like the effing video, guys. We're talking about Pfizer. Ticker symbol is PFB. Yeah, Pfizer, the big pharma stock, the big stock that everybody loves to hate because of COVID. What about all the other companies that just do vaccines as well, guys? Let's put all that crap to the side and let's just talk about Pfizer. Can they still have a promising future with the pipeline? That's the question. People really do not like Pfizer. I think that's the funniest one. That's what we're noticing. It's um feels like it's like the Kevin Durant, you know, where it's just like everything Kevin Durant does, uh, no matter what Kevin Durant does, everyone's going to hate on him. We're LeBron fans here, obviously, but that's neither here or there. But Pfizer, when we talk about them, People love to hate on them because it is true. I mean, their revenue is down. At one point, they were, what, over $100 billion in their peak COVID revenue. But everyone kind of knew that was going to be one-time revenue. And that's where, Lanny, let's look at that revenue of what it's like now that we're adjusting it out of the COVID era and we're back to what the normalized Pfizer is. How are they doing on the top line? You know, again, I haven't really released too much new information yet on what 2024 looks like. But if you recall, they were expecting, let's just say, let's just call it about 60 billion with a billion and a half in either direction. They're expecting about $2.15 with 10 cents in either direction um, in earnings per share. So there's still a $60 billion revenue company. And we'll see if they can, if Walgreens can tear the cover off expectations, <laughs> let's just see if Pfizer can come through here. So, Bert, let's get them through the screener here. <laughs> I was going to say, with the expectations, there's probably, if you and I were to do high jumping, we'd probably have different expectations. I'd be more of the Walgreens clearing the expectations bar where you expect me to barely go over, go over, and you have a much higher area of what you can jump. All right, bad sidebar. Let's run them through the screener. Price. 27.75 forward earnings two dollars and three cents PE ratio is 13.67 for Pfizer. Still low PE. Pharma is in historically a low price to earnings ratio. You guys know J and J is around 15 PE, so this is less than J and J. 
But when you actually look at the dividend payout ratio, this is where it is getting a little alarming. Paying 42 cents a share a quarter, $1.68 a year, the payout ratio is the highest I've seen it at 83%, guys. That is yeah. concerning. Yeah, that's that doesn't leave a lot of wiggle room. So let's look at the dividend growth. Their five-year dividend growth rate is 3.65%, and they've increased that dividend for 13 plus years. Now, granted, every year for the last, I don't know how many now, they've only been doing about one cent a share every year. So like it went from 41 cents a quarter to 42 cents. Still did it in Q4 last year. They said, hey, we were all expecting them to keep it the same, but they didn't. Um, so they must know what their pipeline is looking like, and it must be looking somewhat promising. Again, 13 plus years, but that dividend yield burden, now that they're down 7% still in 2024, they were down, I guess, you know, guys in 2023, over 30%. So it's interesting seeing them continue to fall down and they're now yielding over 6%, 6% yielding stock right here. Yeah, so let's summarize that their P is 13.67, their payout's 82%. Five-year dividend growth rate's 3.65%. They've increased for 13 years with a yield of 6.05%. That is Pfizer, everybody, number one on our video today. Are you buying Pfizer stock? Let us know, guys, below in the comments. Again, we said there's two stocks. Another stock that's almost at 6%. Featured this stock once or twice, maybe on the dividend. Quick pick stock pick Monday. Or this is getting into the tobacco industry, which I think you and I both own this stock, right? Yeah, this was one of my first ones, actually. This was this was one of the OGs in my portfolio. We're talking Philip Morris, ticker symbol P. Um, yeah, that's it's pretty hyped up on PM right now. Not because I smoke, not because I do any of that. Again, guys, you know, definitely take care of yourselves, but. Philip Morris is making a huge impact right now in the heatless tobacco arena and the smokeless tobacco arena. You know, they've really pivoted to the point where revenue is definitely growing at a mm -hmm. fast clip. Um, in fact, right now, their market share across most of the countries that they're pretty much penetrating in had growth in that market year over year in the heatless tobacco units. Yeah. And in fact, overall, Philip Morris, Bert, their international market share overall is 14 and a half percent if you just cut out china it's actually at 28.3 percent from a market share yeah they hit they check two major boxes there for what's going on with the tobacco sector uh international tobacco uh, smoking is much more popular obviously that's we don't that that's just known between the u.s and where it's going down worldwide there's always demand for tobacco products but also with the with the um the move to the I is it Icos I Q O S however you pronounce it Icos, Icos let us know in the comments guys how to yeah I, again I don't product. I don't smoke so I don't I don't know but like they're hitting the other sector that's growing in the U S where a lot of people are going to this new wave like to the tobacco list um, smoking so they're growing in two major areas and that's what's why they're crushing. Yeah, you know, a fun note when I was looking at their investor package, guys, is that it took five years for ICOs or ECOs to hit profitability, which beat Meta, Facebook, or AKA Facebook, Tesla, and Amazon for the, you know, which is interesting that they actually compared themselves to them. <laughs> and then it only took ICOs or ECOs only 10 years to hit 10 billion in revenue, whereas it took Amazon and Tesla longer and they barely. Uh, took a little bit longer than what Meta did for their first ten billion yeah. in revenue. Yeah, I mean, because demand's always there for tobacco products. I mean, it's not just like a decades thing. This has gone on for hundreds of years. People have always had demand for tobacco products, and they're innovating within the sector to meet the demand. Isn't going away. There are people are just more aware of the health risks, and there's they're backing away from traditional tobacco products. But now with the innovation in there, people are finding different ways. And sure, there are different health risks, but they're tapping into the demand in a different way. And it is a very fun way that they're talking about it in their investor deck. And what surprised me was that the Q4 Q4 net revenue from the IQOS or ICOS ECOS brand surpassed the Marlboro brand in Q4 of 2023. Mike drop. I think we run them through the screener now. What 
That's a great one to end on with the facts. Fair price is 91.69. Forward earnings per share is $6.40. That PE ratio is 14.32. 14.3, guys. And again, it's time to look at the dividend payout ratio, which is historically high in the tobacco industry. $5.20 is the annual dividend payout ratio, similar to Pfizer. 81 and a quarter percent, except Mm. I'm not too concerned with Philip Morris. No. It's always high in the tobacco sector. Five-year dividend growth rate is 2.54%. That they've increased it for 15 plus years. Oof, and this is what we were talking about. Another high yielding dividend stock, guys. 5.68%. So almost 6% for Philip Morris. I think you're able to recently catch them below $90 a share recently. So but they're at 91 now. Um, but yeah, 5.68% uh, dividend yield. Yeah, and they're right in line with their five-year average yield of 5.67%. So one basis point above their average. That's right, guys. So we'll put both tickers here on the screen. You know, personally, you know, again, definitely do your own research here, guys. But we're going to tell you what us dividend investors are going to do. We're going to tell you where we might be putting our money. I might take a flyer on Pfizer. I might buy a share just to just to grab a share under 28 just to see, hey, hey, is this – is this the comeback kit here? Yeah, it's, a, it's not a bad idea. One, two, I mean, five shares isn't that much of Pfizer either. So can't hurt while it's down below, in the, especially below the 30s. Why not? Especially because we both have positions and you can help lower our cost basis. Can't hurt. Philip Morris, I'd like them, you know, again, down a couple percent. I'd like to get that yield closer to five, seven, five to six, um, personally. Yeah, and that's just, it's been off my radar. I'm watching it, but I have other ones I'm looking at myself. So, but it's not far from your buy zone, Andy. Not too far, guys. What about you? Are you guys buying these stocks? Are these two stocks to buy right now? What else and where else are you putting your money in this high flying stock market that is up almost 11% year to date heading into this Easter weekend? If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up. And Lanny, what do we need to tell all the diplomaniacs out there? Know your role and shut your mouth. No, I'm just kidding, you guys. I'm just kidding. If just smell out what the dividend diplomats are cooking. If you're not with us, you're against us, Jay. That was Bertha Hurt and Lanny from the DD over and out.